Hi everybody and welcome back. I am a hacker and it's really nice to have you on board. In this video, we'll look at how to retrieve a list of all of the user credentials via an SQL injection. So this is the challenge I want to resolve in this video. But in order to resolve this challenge, we need to resolve a lot of other challenges in order to get to this challenge. So an example of solving other challenges could be this database schema one. So in order to give you some context for this video, we are hacking into OAS Juice Shop from last few videos. So if you are not familiar with OAS Juice Shop, OAS Juice Shop is a wonderful website that's been created by OWASP in order to test your skills or improve your skills or teach somebody the skills of hacking. That's what I'm doing right now. Anyway, this is a website that's purposely kept vulnerable in order to test your skills. So let's just straight get into hacking OWASP Juice Shop. So the main goal of this video would be to engineer a query in order to get all of the fields from the user table of this OWASP Juice Shop. Right now, just looking at this website, I don't know what kind of database it uses or what kind of database table names it have, what kind of database name it have. Like right now, I'm not sure about anything. The only thing I'm sure about it is that it definitely uses a database from which it's curing the, all of these items. I can just refresh the page and then go to burp and analyze what it's doing. And surely from burp, you can see that we have a request which is being sent to the rest and then the products and then to the search. And in the search, uh, it's searching the queue variable. And if I go to the response, what it returns is list of all of the products in JSON format. Now let's see what happens when I search for something. Suppose I search for Apple and press enter. So what it comes up with everything with the name Apple. And if I go to burp and scroll down and try to examine, it doesn't do anything because the search is asynchronously done. It doesn't have any request going on. It just search thing or something on the page and then return with a result. What happens when I enter a single core and then press enter? So it comes up with no result found error. It doesn't come up with anything else. And the burp also doesn't have any history. So what I can do is I can just come over to the request that we were examining and I can just right click on it and send it to repeater. Once I send it to repeater, then I can click on repeater and come over here and examine what happens with the request. Or as previously searched, I will provide it with Apple the way I did in the search and then I will send the request. So what it would do, it would do the same thing as it did with the search on the website. So it returned two items containing Apple keyword. Now this is fun, but this isn't giving us any information. So what I wanna do is the same thing I did with the search. I wanna provide a single code and then click on send. So like up till now, I didn't knew what kind of SQL database it uses or what kind of query it uses, but as soon as I provided it with a single code, it throwed an error which states SQL light error. From this, I know that the Juice Shop is using SQL light database. And now I can research much more things about SQL light. I know also going through the error in much more detail, I know that it does have a product table which starts with two round brackets and it throws just an error. So in order to complete the query or in order to change the error or something, what I will do, I will provide two with two brackets or just one in order to examine what happens. So I'll click on send again and you would see, see that the error didn't change. So I'll provide another bracket and then click on send. And what this send is doing, it is requesting, it is sending the request again and again. So now with the two brackets, you can see that the error changed a little bit, but it's not, it's still not that helpful. So you would say that Mr. Hacker, how would I guess I need to provide a single quote and then two double quotes? Well, it depends on what kind of database you are curing. Also, it's a standard procedure in order to look at something and provide it with something. Now, this is not helping in my case. 
So it's all just a standard procedure and it's all trial and error. You would try something and you will get error and you will improve upon it. As you can see, it's not helping. So that's why I provided first a single code, then double, uh, then two round brackets, but that didn't help. So what I would do, I would provide two dashes and then try to click on send and see if the error changes a little bit. If it does, I will improve upon. And indeed, it uh, the error got changed. Like with my previous things, the error wasn't getting changed, but now I know that we are making progress. There is something that we have done. So, so now we would say that, Mr. Hacker, please explain what these two dashes does. Well, what these two dashes does is it comments the query or it comments whatever comes after these two dashes in the query. If you want to know more about it, you can just Google these two dashes in a query and it will give you more information. But what you need to understand is that I'm willing to comment the entire query that comes after these two dashes. So it commented down the entire query and it provided me the result that we have an incomplete input that's been provided. So from here, I can see that we have started two brackets or whoever wrote the query started these two brackets. And what I have to do is I have to close those two round brackets before the two dashes. So if I click send again, you would see that I get success. That means that up till now, my query has worked and this website or this search box is vulnerable to SQL injection. Now I can improve upon. Now I have to find two things. The first thing is that I have to find the database schema the second thing is I have to find the user table and I have to retrieve all of the fields from that. So I can do that by dumping in the union query. And that's pretty, pretty easy. Don't get scared. The union query is just a simple query that you can pinch and you can get data from two databases at the same time. So what the union query is that it allows you to get data from two databases at the same time. So how can I write the union query? Well, it's simple. I can say union, U-N-I-O-N, -N, and then I can say space, but I would URL encode the space with writing person 20. Then after writing union and a space, I can write select, then again give a space, which is person 20 in URL encoded form. And then I can say asterisk, which means select everything. And then I can again give a space, which would be person 20. And then I can say from, and then I can provide a table name after the space. So for a table name, I want to provide the SQL Light Master table name. And what do I mean by that? Like you would say, how can you say that? Well, if you go to this SQLite tutorial website, you will find out that in the SQLite database, we have a table by the name of SQLite master, which stores the entire data about the database, its tables, its keys, and everything that's in that database. So what I can do is I can query from this database table by writing select SQL from SQL master. And it will provide me all of the tables that are in the OWASP Jusharp database table. So I'll come over to the burp and I will provide the SQLite master. And it just shifted to the next line, but I will press Control Z and write the SQLite underscore master manually. And then click on send. And you will see that the error got changed again. What the error, like you always have to read the error and analyze what it's saying. If you don't understand, you can just Google it and you will find relevant, result to, uh, relevant results to that error. In my case, I understand what's saying. It's saying that SQL select to the left and right union do not have the same number of columns. What that means is that the star I have provided 
is not equal to the left side and the right side. What that means is that the columns that I have provided at the right side of the query, as uh, at the right side of the union query is not equal to the columns that I have provided at the right or left side of the query. So that's what it's saying. So what I can do is I can open up a terminal. I can just run a simple SQL map scan on the database, but I think that would be cheating at this point. Uh, and most of my viewers don't understand what SQL map is. If you're willing, you can use it. If you do understand what SQL map is, you can just run a quick scan on SQL map. But in my case, I won't do that because I think it's cheating and it's not necessary at this point. But if you do understand, you can do that. Or if you are willing to run a quick Google scan on it, you can just go to Google and search for SQL map. It's pretty simple. Uh, it would give you the query and the result and the columns and how much column it does have, which I will get into something in later videos, but, right, but not right now. In this video, I will try to engineer the query manually and try to explain everything in baby steps in order to make you understand everything in very simple manner and make you a better ha hacker in very simple manner. Anyway, so far we have a query with union also having the SQL Lite master. If you don't understand what SQL master is, uh, it is a database table which contains all the data about the database tables, the database schema, and everything that's in the database that we are currently queuing on. Anyway, coming back over to Burp, and we have this query. We need to find out the exact number of columns that are at the left side. So instead of star, what I will do, I will try to find the number of columns. So for starting point, I will just write one comma two. That means I wanna provide it with one with two columns. I'm assuming that the product table have two columns in it. I will click on send. If the error doesn't changes, we will increase the number of columns and that would be just writing comma three. Then clicking on send. And in order to speed thing up, I will write four comma five comma six then click on send again. And then I will increase the columns by saying comma seven, comma eight, and then click on send again. And still the columns are less, so let's say comma nine, and then click on send. So you can see that we have just matched the column at left and right side, and it just gave us the success message, and also it retrieved the data we needed. So now we, we know that the product table has nine columns and our query is okay. Now coming back towards the article of the SQL light, can see that we do have an SQL object uh, and which will provide us the entire schema of the database, the tables, the, um, the, the, the fields in the table and all of the interesting stuff. So what I can do is I can remove the one and instead of one, I can write SQL and the rest of the query would be the same. Once I replace that and click on send, you would see that we will get all of the tables from the database, all of the schema, everything from the database. So from here, I can see that in the juice shop table, we have an address table, we have basket items, we have baskets, we have captcha, and I'm not interested in any of these, these tables. What I'm interested in is this user table. So now that I know that we have a user table and inside that user table, we have passwords, we have emails, so I can play around with this table and I can retrieve everything. So in order to do that, I will replace this SQL master with user or users and I can replace this SQL with email and password. You know, we can see from here, we have passwords as well. And then click on send. 
boom, we have the email addresses and the password. Passwords. Now what I can do is I can find out the decrypted form of this password. Uh, so you can see that the passwords are in encrypted form. So what I can do is I can come over to the crack station. I can copy the passwords and I can paste them in and I can decrypt them. But first I have to prove that I'm not a robot. And once I prove that I'm not a robot, I can click on crack hashes. Anyway, coming over to the juice shop again, what we have solved is the user credential one, also the database schema one. So as I said in the start of the video, our main goal was to retrieve the list of user credential via SQL injection, but we have to first get the database schema before solving this challenge. I think the video is getting long. I wanted to solve some more challenges in this video, but I think the video is getting long and it would be bad uh, like I tried to crack this password on crack station, but for some reason it didn't work. Anyway, in the next video, I will try to crack the um, crack this password and try to log in with the user accounts and s solve some, some of the challenges. For some reason, all of my previous progress has gone. So while I'm not making videos, I will redo all of the challenges that we sorted out in previous videos and I will try to work on other challenges. So I will try to wrap the all of the other challenges in the next video. So stay tuned for next video because we are finishing off the OS juice shop in the next video. I will finish off all of the challenges in the next video. It will take time, it will be a long video, like not like this um, in which we will do one or two challenges, but I will finish off all of, the, uh, all of the challenges in the next video. Next video would be the final video for OWASP 2 Shop. Just to recap, in this video, we used Burp Suit in order to get the database schema as well as retrieve all of the users from the database using SQL injection. So this is pretty much it for this video. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you did learn something new in this video. If you wanted to know how to do the same thing with SQL injection, just leave a comment down below and I will create a separate video on solving the exact same challenge using SQL map or SQL mapper. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. As always, stay cheeky bricky and peace out.